I've been very busy the last few weeks working on a project uh, with a friend for once and uh, I haven't been certain about how well it would actually go and whether or not uh, the first prototypes would even work so I haven't been making any videos about it despite it being a rather major project however it's finally starting to take shape so I figured it's time to unveil it so I present to you the quadruple data logging 150 watt current sink which is uh, built into one of these old NEC TV transmitter cases which is which are basically just a huge heat sink as you saw so the deal with this thing is that uh, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, who is sadly a bit camera shy, uh, has done all the work on these uh, boards inside here, which are has a 32-bit ST micro microcontroller and an op-amp and a whole lot of uh, passives. There's a lot of through-hole stuff on them, as you can see, because these are prototypes made for hand assembly. And uh, these are basically basic uh, three channel current shunts, they got quadruple op amps uh, and uh, three of the channels are used to drive these three MOSFETs and uh, they also got the current sense resistors there and these are able to handle the design goal is about 150 watts but that requires a very cool heatsink so the realistic number is about 140 watts and the purpose of this is of course to act as a battery testing device at least for my purposes however they are current sinks that can be used for any purpose you would wish. And uh, there are four of these pods. So this unit uh, basically can dissipate about 600 watts of power, uh, absolute maximum. So the story behind this thing is that uh, I went to my friend and asked <laughs> straight out, hey, I would need a, a data logging current sink, or at least a device to data log something, because I've got a whole lot of batteries to test. and. He, he's been working on some very complex project uh, recently and uh, he ju just said sure I'd like to do some basic stuff for once so he said uh, got going cutting up these uh, boards which are basically a free double very basic current sink uh, roughly the same as you'd see on any school book you'd <laughs> ever get in electronics as well as a 32-bit uh, ST microcontroller and a bit of EEPROM. Uh, these, they, are, they are also electrically isolated from each other, so there's no connection between uh, the heatsink and the boards, uh, or the output terminals between the boards. So they've got uh, isolated, uh, up to a couple of isolated serial pods on them, as well as unisolated serial pods, which enables them to essentially daisy chain together so we get away with only using one serial pot there which goes to board 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 maintaining isolation between them and this is in order to be able to test 48 volt banks since uh, you can't just uh, put uh, current sinks in series that would be probably make everything os oscillate unless you had some co form of uh, communication between them but that, that's very difficult to implement uh, compared to just having them isolated. So while he worked on the boards, uh, I worked on all the ancillary stuff. I've uh, uh, drilled all the holes in this case, uh, drilled and tapped all the uh, heatsink stuff, which uh, has been a fairly major project since I'm horrible at that kind of stuff. Uh, as you can see on my lovely serial port hole there, it's extremely even and nice, but I don't quite care. And I've also been doing all the thermal stuff, and dimensioning the fans now that I've got the boards in it, running some kind of very basic firmware. And uh, right now I'm working on a fan control unit, which is going to use uh, two NTCs to adjust uh, uh, these fans in uh, two separate channels. That's because these, these heat sinks uh, are basically twofold. There's a split going down there. So this. Uh, channel number two here basically has its own heatsink so it can have its own fan control whereas these three are sharing the same heatsink and uh, might as well share share fan control. I found that the thermal resistance from these two from the transistors to the 
roughly this pot in the PCB where I mounted a, an NTC resistor is about 4 degrees Celsius uh, on the full load, so it should be a fairly good compromise to just run two fan channels. Now, you might notice that the, <laughs> this thing has, uh, despite only being a 600 watt device, has sh huge fans. It's got three of these uh, one amp delta server fans that I scavenged uh, out of an old server some a couple of days ago, and uh, that's because uh, since these TU220 uh, transistors are isolated, they have uh, one of those insulating spaces between them and the heatsink. They have about two degrees Celsius per watt of thermal resistance, and. Uh, while dissipating the peak pair of uh, almost 40 watts per transistor, uh, you, well it's actually 50 watts per transistor under peak load, uh, you get uh, very very high junction temperatures and uh, unless I run these fans on maximum, we're basically sitting at uh, junction temperatures uh, at somewhere around uh, 160 degrees, which is, um, they are specified to run that way, but yeah, it's not uh, optimal by any means. So, the thermal limits on these things are really, really tight. Uh, ideally, we should be running uh, four transistors per board at least, but uh, uh, one of the designed goals of this thing was to run a 5x5 five five centimeter PCB, just in order to see if it's uh, feasible, which uh, uh, it was, but uh, it's uh, quite crammed, as you can see. Another designed goal for this thing was to make it as... Uh, simple to construct as possible, maybe using mostly through-hole parts and uh, it's got about 20 SMD parts or so, including the processor and a few uh, Cena diodes and normal diodes on the other side but uh, we managed to escape all the 0603s and smaller devices there are no uh, surface mount passives and that's uh, pretty much okay that's what I, wanted to, what I wanted to avoid because it gets so tedious assembling boards using just surface mount passives you basically end up losing track of all the components, and if you mount something wrong, you're basically screwed. But uh, although it's somewhat close to the limit of the, what the power transistors can handle, uh, uh, it's basically okay as long as the heatsink is kept below 50-60 degrees Celsius at the point of contact, which, um, yeah, it's uh, doable, doable. Uh, but uh, I'm designing the fan controller since uh, as long as you're not dissipating the peak power, essentially if you're under 100 watts per device, your temperature is going to drop drastically due to the thermal resistance between the transistors and the heatsink. So you don't need to run the fans anywhere near full power. If you if you just to use three of these at once or two, uh, you, you can basically almost turn off the fans. So it needs to have some form of fan control in it in order to... Uh, just not make you deaf because you running the, these fans on maximum you basically need to wear hearing protection it, if you're in the same room as it uh, you, it's hard to speak at a normal level when they're running I mean you can imagine this is basically a full-blown server <laughs> I mean we've got uh, over 30 watts of fans so beyond the boards which are of course custom manufactured I've done my usual thing and tried to recycle as most as much stuff as possible when designing this unit, all the ancillary stuff anyway. So the case is obviously a reused uh, TV transmitter power amplifier or pre-amplifier case. Uh, the buttons are reused from another oval TV transmitter. They are very good buttons actually, just listen to those. They're lovely. And the LEDs are reused. <laughs> All the cabling is uh, reused TV transmitter wiring uh, and there's a lot of cat used CAT5 running through doing the uh, external voltage sense since this thing does uh, four-wire voltage measuring. I've got a... I've manufactured an adapter here so you clamp these onto the device and test because one of the design goals for this thing was to have under voltage protection and automatic cycling ability so that you could uh, uh, for, for instance, put this uh, by four batteries and use the computer through the serial port to configure it to run three cycles and you would connect a charger to these two, that's why there's a relay on each board so you would connect a charger to it, it would de discharge the battery to the set voltage uh, 
and since it's running at uh, 10 amps you need to have these 4 wire measurement or else you're going to need to compensate for the drop in the wires which could be almost a volt and you don't want to be a volt off when it comes to under voltage protection so you would uh, configure it to cycle the battery once or several times and this thing should basically be able to sit there uh, for a long time and do everything automatically and that's uh, why I wanted it since my current setup is just uh, if you've seen my other videos it's just a a single sink with uh, a clock attached to it so you need to manually read the time and do the data logging whereas this thing will be able to not only do four batteries at once but it'll be able to uh, log uh, discharge curves and it'll be able to measure the voltage a lot more precisely and it's, basi it's basically the perfect device for the intended purpose uh, there's very little else you could ask out of it the boards themselves are also running uh, uh, the biggest limitation of them is the safe operating area of the transistors and the boards are designed in such a way that uh, the maximum suitable current is about 10.711 amps. Now that, uh, if you run a lower voltage than the peak 15 volts it's specified for, you could in theory run these FET at a much higher current, but uh, that's not going to be the case since uh, you can't set it higher than that. Uh, however, if there's ever a revision 2 or so, there's probably going to be a bit more flexibility on the drive circuitry. These are just prototype boards, they are. <laughs> Uh, a bit dodgy in a few ways. There's a few hacks on them that we had to do after manufacture. But uh, you could, in theory, run, for instance, 20 amps at 6 volts or 40 amps at uh, 3 volts. And these boards are indeed zero volt capable. If you, since they aren't relying on any load resistors on the board, in your normal current chunk, you have a fairly high value. Uh, for instance, 0.39 or 0.5 ohm load resistor for each uh, channel, which uh, at 10 amps would limit this to 5 volts. But uh, that's not the case since we're not running in load resistors. You can basically test double A batteries with this thing, and since the current is adjustable, you can even uh, you can discharge them at uh, the range is about uh, safely 200 milliamps to. 10 amps, that's the specified range basically. So you could test basically any kind of battery with it, or so even as I'm using for thermal testing, test a computer power supply. Uh, this is a 850 watt thing which uh, has separate 12 volt rails, separately regulated even, so it's great for <laughs> testing the unit rather than testing the power supply, but you could uh, I mean, you've got four channels on this thing, so you could hook it up to the 3.35 12 volt and some other rail on a computer power supply and do testing on up to 10 amps on each rail. Or you could connect two of them to, for instance, the 12 volt range and two to the 5 volt range. It's however you wish, since they are isolated, you can do basically anything. You could, in theory, connect uh, these two to the grid and these two to ground, and nothing would happen. But yeah, that's, I'm not going to try doing that with this kind of low voltage wiring. <laughs> but yeah, right now I'm doing some thermal stuff. I'm trying to characterize these uh, recycled NTCs that I've pulled out of a power supply that I'm going to use for the fan controller. In order to get a good uh, fan curve, I need to adjust the gain of the op amp that's doing the fan control. And... Uh, yeah. And that's basically it for now. I might be doing a few more updates on this thing. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.